After setting both franchise records for most wins and points during a regular season, we're asking the big question today. Can the bread man deliver a Stanley Cup in New York? Hey everybody, welcome into Clearing the Benches, your one-stop shop for daily fresh hockey content. To go ahead and hit your subscribe button right now, every single day we'll bring you in a new hockey video to enjoy. Well, the playoff matchups are all locked up and the New York Rangers will be taking on the Washington Capitals in the first round. Uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about both that matchup and some of the Rangers' achievements during this season. Uh, the Rangers set a franchise record with 55 wins. They also set a franchise record with 114 points. Some big milestones in New York Rangers history took place this year. A lot of them all in the same game. Uh, Chris Kreider scored his 300th goal, not once but twice, in a game against Arizona. It was called back the first time, but then he got it later in the game. Uh, in that same game, Jonathan Quick passed Ryan Miller to become the U.S. born most winning goaltender in NHL history. I believe that was his 392nd win. And also in that game, Alexi Lafreniere scored his first NHL hat trick. So uh, the Rangers had a lot of big accomplishments, including Artemi Panarin, the bread man. He had a huge year. He had his best stats ever. He scored 49 goals this year, and he came in with 120 points. So the question today we're going to be asking is, can the Rangers get through all of these teams that they're going to have to get through, and can Panarin really step his game up in the playoffs? Uh, he has not exactly been the best playoff performer up to this point in his career. Uh, he's played in 57 games, and he's only got 16 goals. He's got 30 assists. But the big glaring number is he is a minus 16. And going against some of the teams that the Rangers would have to go through to get to the Stanley Cup, Panarin would have to be a plus in the plus minus department and a big plus if he's going to put the Rangers on his back and try to carry them to a Stanley Cup. Uh, when I look at the matchup against the Capitals, the Rangers this year were 2-2 two and two against the Caps. Um, Charlie Lindgren established himself as the Caps' number one goaltender. He had 25 wins this year, a 267 goals against, and a big 911 save percentage. I think the league average is only about 904, so he's coming in well above league average numbers. Darcy Kemper didn't have his greatest year this year. He only had 13 wins. And he had a 3.51 goals against and only an 897 save percentage. So I'm pretty sure the Caps don't want to see him in between the pipes this year. Uh, looking at what the Caps have up front, not a whole lot of scoring power. I know Ovechkin plays on that team and Ovechkin's capable of doing anything. However, this year... Uh, Dylan Strome led them in points with only 67, and he was a minus 13. Ovechkin, we all know, lit up in the second half. He had crazy goals in the second half. I think he only had like eight or nine in the first half of the year. And then he had big numbers in the second half. But even though he had 65 points this year, he's coming in at a minus 22. Uh, I know a lot of that was at the beginning of the year. To be honest with you, it looked like he wasn't loafing, but he wasn't really putting in his best defensive effort. And it looked like he was just out there for the Gretzky goal chase. Uh, as far as the Rangers go coming into this matchup, the New York Rangers have five players with 70 or more points. Uh, Panarin led the way with 120. Uh, Vincent Trocek took over this year as a real leader for the Rangers, um, both on and off the ice. You know, Trocek is a guy, he plays with a lot of grit, and he's a, he's a skillful player, but he just doesn't have, you know, the big flashy moves. He kind of just does it more methodically, but he did it to the, po uh, to the tune of 77 points this year, which is nothing to sneeze at. Chris Kreider played his usual consistent game. He had 75 points. Adam Fox came in with 73 points from the back end. And 
Some people thought it was a, a little bit of a disappointing year for Mika Zibanejad, but he still came in with 72 points. And again, he is a very, very streaky scorer. And as my old saying goes, you only need to get a guy hot for six weeks to win a Stanley Cup. Zibanejad could be that guy. He is a prolific scorer. And again, he scores in bunches. Uh, so I would not be surprised if he got red hot. When you look at the goaltending for the New York Rangers, uh, Igor Shosturkin obviously is their big name goalie. He's got 36 wins this year. He came in with a 2.58 goals against and a 913 save percentage. Those are excellent numbers. Uh, then you've got Jonathan Quick, and to me, this is gonna. He is going to be the one stabilizing factor for the New York Rangers going forward. Uh, in the past, the Rangers have jumped out to, you know, 2 nothing series lead against the Devils, Tampa Bay, and then they got smoked four straight. Uh, I think this year with a guy like Jonathan Quick, that ain't happening. I think when the, you know, when it really gets ugly for the Rangers, you know, they can say, hey, Quick, you got to get in there. You got to stop the bleeding and you got to stop it now. And Jonathan Quick, you know, I know he barely played, if at all, last year for Vegas, but he's got three cups to his name. And those two in L.A. were very impressive. So uh, the New York Rangers are feeling very comfortable about their goaltending situation. And again, I think Jonathan Quick is going to bring a real calming effect to this team. Uh, I know Laviolette can be a little bit of you know a volatile guy, but at the same time, I think he's a guy uh, that can also stabilize this team. Have a talk to him. You know, he's won a cup himself as a coach, so he knows what it takes. Um, if the Rangers were able to get past the Washington Capitals in the first round, let's take a look at how they did against some of the other teams that they may have to match up against. Uh, if they were to have to play against the New York Islanders, the Rangers would feel pretty good about it. They went 3-1 and one this year against the Islanders. They scored 15 goals. They gave up 13. Uh, against Carolina, again. Now, these were really, really close, close games. Uh, the Rangers won two games, and they only lost one, but the Rangers scored a whopping five goals in those three games. Uh, they only gave up seven in those three games, but you're going to need to score more than five goals in three games to get past Carolina in the playoffs. Um, Rangers do not want to see the Toronto Maple Leafs come up on their schedule. They were one and two this year against the Maple Leafs, and they were outscored 10 goals to 13. And, you know, the way that Austin Matthews is playing, I know he didn't get to 70 goals. He got you know, to 69, I'll tell you what, he is somebody that I really think he has matured enough in his game that he could put the Maple Leafs on his back and he could really be the deciding factor in this year's playoffs. So I know the Rangers would not be happy if they saw Toronto up on their schedule. Uh, the Rangers surprisingly were 2-1 and one against the Tampa Bay Lightning this year, outscoring them 11 goals to 8. Tampa is usually a thorn in their side. And I'll tell you, as a New York Rangers fan, there's a lot of teams on this list that just seem to have the Rangers number. You know, um, the Islanders always seem like they can beat the Rangers. Carolina held the Rangers to five goals in three games. Um, Tampa, you know, the Rangers, they blew it a couple of years ago. They were up two games to none, and then they blew it against Tampa. You got Vasilevsky, Hedman, Stamkos, Kucherov. That's scary stuff if you're a Ranger fan. Uh, and then finally, the Boston Bruins. The Rangers would hope to play against them. They were 3-0 and against them this year, and they outscored them 14 goals to 7. Uh, when we look at what the Rangers have got on the back end, I'll tell you what, this is a position of strength for them, and a lot of these guys play playoff hockey throughout the regular season, and I'm talking about guys like Truba, Keandre Miller, uh, Ryan Lindgren, it's going to be awesome to see him go up against his brother, Charlie Lindgren. I'd be surprised to see maybe if, you know, Ryan Lindgren throws him a little snow shovel stop or does something to him, maybe skates through the crease, gives a little extra whack after the whistle like brothers do. So that'll be really interesting. And then, of course, you've got Adam Fox and then you've got Eric Gustafson. You know, Adam Fox really, really played well this year. Uh, I know he's not really going to be so high up in the Norris race. I know I think it's going to be McCarr on that one. 
But as far as them playing steady as a group, and they play playoff hockey throughout the year, I think that the Rangers' uh, D could be stable enough to get them through a couple of rounds. So that's going to be it for this episode. We're just going to ask the big question, can Artemi Panarin, the bread man, deliver a Stanley Cup in New York? If you like this video, please hit your subscribe button, hit the like button, feel free to share it. And as we always do here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.